Why Earth has so much water? Have you ever seen the ocean? Some of you could see it only on TV, but you agree that it has something alluring on its surface as well as in its depth. But do we all know about it? Um, probably not. Today's video is going to be about water, and if you saw the headline, the main question is why Earth has so much water on it? And the speaker of this video is me, yellow banana with sunglasses. But don't be confused, you'll get used to me. So, okay, without further ado, let's dive into the case. Oceans covered three quarters of the Earth, but the water on the surface accounts for only one four thousandth of the total mass of the planet. So, it's not so much in total. But the question why is closely related to the question where. Where is the origin of water? We all know that water played and still plays the crucial part in the development of life. Human body contains at about 60% and it's an integral part of all organic organisms, including fruits as well. And unlike every other planet in our solar system, Earth's surface is 71% liquid water. But it's also kind of weird because everything we know about how and when our planet forms says Earth's surface should be bone dry. So the idea that water just came out of the blue is unsustainable. But it's a good pun. Scientists suggest that the mystery of water on Earth can be hidden in comets' bodies. According to a new study, scientists say that the water in many comets may share a common origin with Earth's oceans, reinforcing the idea that comets played a key role in bringing water to our planet. So yeah, quite interesting, especially knowing that it happened billions of years ago. But unlike that time, nowadays our Earth has some kind of organisms on its surface, and some of them managed to build such things like observatories. The world's largest one, which name is the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or just SOFIA, observed the comet Wirtanen as it made its closest approach to Earth in December 2018. Data collected from the high-flying observatory found that this comet contains ocean-like water. And by comparing this with information about other comets, scientists suggested a new study that many more comets than previously thought could have delivered water to Earth. So, to give you the answer on where the hell these comets came from, we need to know where planets came from. So if we could go back in time, we'd see our solar system forming from the collapse of a large cloud of dust and gas. The dense blob of gas at the center ignited to form the Sun, which as a young, unstable star unleashed a fierce solar wind. Over time, considerable time, this stream of charged particles pushed the remaining gas cloud farther and farther out, leaving only solid particles behind to clump together into rocks, then into so-called planetesimals, and finally, the rocky planets of the inner solar system that we know today. And here's the problem. Water, in the form of ice, couldn't have been one of the solid particles that stuck around, because the early inner solar system was far too hot for frozen water. So any water vapor would have been blasted away by the solar wind. But our solar system has such regions like the Kuiper Belt, beyond Neptune, or the Oort Cloud for much leftover debris. Comets come from these areas, but we can only see them when their orbits bring them closer to the Sun. The heat from the sun causes some of the dirty snow to vaporize, creating the fuzzy halo or coma of water vapor, dust, and ice grains seen in comet images. Scientists predict that the water in Earth's oceans came from water-carrying bodies in the early solar system that collided with our planet, similar to today's ice-rich asteroids or comets. Wow! But how many asteroids should have hit our Earth to produce such a big water volume including five oceans? the Arctic, Atlantic, Indian, Pacific, and Southern. The idea of water that originated from comets is still in dispute, but scientists started to dig further into this theory using the very new technologies. And they succeeded in detecting two types of water. According to their findings, we have regular water, which chemical name is H2O because it's made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. But we also have heavy water, chemical name HDO, which has an extra neutrally charged particle called a neutron inside one of the hydrogen atoms. So scientists try to compare the amount of heavy to regular water in comets. And if comets have the same ratio of these water types as Earth's oceans, it indicates that the water in both may share a common origin. Scientists have only been able to study this ratio in about a dozen comets since the 1980s. But it's difficult to study a comet's water from the ground because water in Earth's atmosphere blocks its signatures. 
So now we know that water was neither part of the original package of Earth nor manufactured here, it must have flown in from far away. On meteoroids or comets or other bodies originating in the outer solar system, where they were far enough from the sun for frozen water to survive. But here's the problem. Comets, being dirty ice balls, are a logical candidate for the source of our water, but were ruled out when we discovered that they are far richer in heavy hydrogen than Earth water. If you like chemistry, heavy hydrogen is hydrogen with a neutron as well as a proton in its nucleus. For every million hydrogen atoms in Earth water, about 150 are heavy ones, while typical comet water has twice that many. These mismatched chemical signatures suggest that Earth's water could not have arrived on comets. It turns out that the most likely source for Earth's water is a type of meteorite called a carbonaceous chondrite. Chondrite is just the name given to the class of stony meteoroids that most commonly strike the Earth. But only the carbonaceous chondrites contain water, as well as lots of carbon. They have water in them because they formed out beyond the sun's frost line. And what's more, their water has levels of heavy hydrogen, similar to that of Earth water, strongly suggesting that these Earth crashers are the source of our ice caps, clouds, rivers, and oceans. You can't remember unlike the Earth when there was a period called the Late Heavy Bombardment, around 3.9 billion years ago. During that time, lots of comets and asteroids carrying icy water slammed into Earth and other celestial bodies, forming craters and our oceans. But exactly these huge dents filled with water were the birthplaces of our first predecessors. And fortunately, we live in a time where every day opens new possibilities to make new discoveries that can get rid of old theories and giving birth to new ones. Share this video with your friends, and if you like, just write a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe on this channel to see more interesting videos. See you guys!